Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new third generation Polaris notebook from Tuxedo Computers. It's available in both a 15 and 17 inch version, and I actually have both of them right here in front of me. So what I'm going to do is compare them side by side and, of course, give you my thoughts. And if you're in the market for a new notebook, sometimes the size of the display can be a hard choice. I mean, do you go for a larger display, which is going to add a bit more weight? Or do you go for a smaller display in order to increase portability? In this review, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on both the Players 15 as well as the Players 17. And there's definitely going to be a lot to talk about here. The new third generation refresh of the Players comes with IPS panels, which feature a resolution of up to 3K, with a refresh rate of up to 240 Hertz, depending on the configuration. And Tuxedo claims that these models will give you up to seven hours of battery life. You can order the Polaris with either an AMD or Intel CPU, depending on your preference. And the review units that were sent to me are equipped with the AMD CPU, which I'll be talking about in more detail here very shortly. Now, before we get started, there's a quick disclaimer that I need to get out of the way, especially for those of you that might be new to Learn Linux TV. My policy when it comes to reviews is that any company that sends me an item for review does so at their own risk, because I'm always going to give you my honest and unbiased opinion, even if it's not a favorable review. In addition, I don't allow any third party to screen my reviews before you guys get to see them, so Tuxedo Computers is seeing this review for the first time, the exact same time that you guys are seeing this video for the first time. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the third generation Polaris Notebook from Tuxedo Computers. As I mentioned, I have both the Polaris 15 and the Polaris 17 in the studio today. And the configuration of these review units are actually identical. In fact, the only difference between them is the chassis and the size of the display. Considering that CPUs from AMD have a lot of fans within my audience, I recommended that they send their AMD versions to me, and that's exactly what they did. Specifically, these units shipped with the AMD Ryzen 5800H CPU, and this processor is very powerful. It has eight cores with 16 threads. The base clock is at 3.2 gigahertz, but it can actually boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. Also, this CPU has a level two cache of four megabytes. As an alternative, you can also order the Polaris with an Intel i7 11800H CPU, if that's your preference. However, switching over to the Intel CPU does increase the cost overall. When it comes to memory, the review units were shipped with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is more than enough for me for the purposes of this review. For storage, the units shipped with a 500 gigabyte SSD, specifically the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. Samsung's SSDs have always been good to me, so no complaints there. When it comes to the GPU, the new Polaris model shipped with the NVIDIA RTX 3060, which has six gigabytes of RAM and some pretty impressive specs overall. Now, my GPU preference currently is AMD, but unfortunately, there's no AMD option for the GPU as of the time of this recording. Don't get me wrong, NVIDIA GPUs are fine, but they require a proprietary driver, which is going to bother some of you more than others. Tuxedo makes sure that the appropriate driver is installed out of the box, so there's no functional issue here, it's just a matter of preference. The RTX 3060 will definitely give you some good performance in your games. When it comes to pricing, the new Polaris models start at around 1480 euros, which I believe converts to somewhere around 1600 US dollars. And also, the starting point for the price is the same regardless of whether you go with the Polaris 15 or the Polaris 17. Considering that the Polaris 15 and the Polaris 17 start at around the same price and contain the exact same hardware, the primary difference between them comes down to the chassis and the size of the screen. And there's actually a considerable difference between the two models when it comes to the chassis, which you'll notice right away when you look at the lids. The lid on the Player 17, for example, has a cool looking curve as well as some outlines on the side. By comparison, the lid on the Player 15 doesn't really have a curved design or the lines on the side, it's actually a more standard look. The power and tuxedo control center buttons also have a different shape on each, as does the palm rest. 
Each model also has a different keyboard, but that's to be expected considering the two different sizes. And the details that I just mentioned about the chassis isn't even the biggest difference between the 15-inch and the 17-inch models. The materials that the chassis are made of are also different. The Polaris 15 actually has an aluminum base, which is really cool, but the display frame and the bottom portion of the chassis are made of plastic. On the Polaris 17, the entire unit is made of plastic. Now, at this price point, I actually prefer all aluminum, so the presence of a plastic chassis is a bit of a downside. But then again, the chassis do feel very sturdy and well-built, so at the end of the day, it's just a matter of preference. When it comes to available ports, both the players 15 and 17 are the same. The third generation models feature a single USB 2.0 port, a headphone jack, and a microphone jack on the left-hand side. On the right side, we have an SD card reader and two first-generation USB 3.2 ports. On the back of the units, we have a barrel connector for the AC adapter, a USB-C port, as well as an HDMI port. In addition, there's also a physical Ethernet jack as well, which is always welcome. I love it when I'm able to plug in an Ethernet cable to a notebook without an adapter. But there's a quick side note about the USB-C port, though. If you order a Polaris notebook and you choose the Intel CPU, then the USB-C port on the back is equipped with Thunderbolt 4. With the AMD version, however, then the USB-C port does not feature Thunderbolt 4 in that case, and is instead a second-generation USB 3.2 port. So that means if you plan on using Thunderbolt devices, then you'll need to equip your model with the Intel CPU. Now, let's talk about the display. The panel on the Generation 3 Polaris models is quite good. The brightness is more than adequate, and the colors look really great. With the 3K displays that my review unit is shipped with, I cannot see individual pixels, and I'm very satisfied with it. I also like the 3K resolution quite a bit. On both the 15 and 17 inch models, I was able to read everything on the screen clearly, and nothing appeared to be too small. Specifically, the resolution on the review units was 2560 by 1440, with a refresh rate of 165 Hz. Now, I don't have an opinion on the 1080p versions, because that's not what they shipped me. But honestly, I can't really think of a reason to opt for the 1080p version. I mean, for 15 and 17 inch notebooks, it's usually better to get a larger resolution if you can. Depending on how you configure the players, there's actually several options available when it comes to refresh rates, with some of them going as high as 240 Hz. Now, let's talk about the keyboard. I found the typing experience to be about the same on both models. The Player 17 has a slightly larger keyboard than the Player's 15, but not to the point where I really noticed any difference between the two. The key travel is really good, and the keys are satisfying to press. Also, the keyboard is backlit, and you can customize the color of the backlight as well. I don't really have much to say about the keyboard. It's perfectly fine. It's comfortable to type on. I like the key travel. The backlight is really cool. So I guess, what more can you ask for? Going through the rest of the hardware, both models feature a power button and a tuxedo control center button side by side on the palm rest at the top right corner. The tuxedo control center is something that I've mentioned during each of my tuxedo notebook reviews, so I won't go into too much detail about that here, but I definitely want to give it a quick mention in case you haven't seen one of my previous reviews. In my opinion, the tuxedo control center is a killer feature. It gives you the most control over things like fan speed, CPU, battery life, and other things than any other Linux laptop vendor that I've used. This app allows you to find your own balance between power savings, fan noise, and CPU speed. You could turn things down to conserve power, or you could crank everything up and play a game. I really like the control center and all of the customization options that it gives you access to. It's definitely something that other vendors should pay attention to. When it comes to noise, with the default settings, I didn't hear the fan at all. So it stays pretty much quiet most of the time, unless I'm playing a game or something like that. And overall, the new Polaris models actually seem to run quite cool. And that's a really good thing because gaming laptops traditionally can get quite toasty. Now I want to take a moment and talk about the sound quality, because that's obviously something that a lot of you guys care about. And the sound quality on these models is actually fine. Now, don't get me wrong, they're not going to win any awards as the best sounding notebooks on the planet, but they're actually better sounding than most of the notebooks that I have in the studio. When I crank up the volume while I'm listening to music or something like that, and I just max out the volume, 
There's no rattling or distortion or anything like that. Everything sounds, well, fine. Let's switch gears and talk about the operating system that ships with Tuxedo computers. Specifically, these models feature Tuxedo OS, which is a customized version of Ubuntu LTS with the Budgie desktop, and some other configurations as well thrown in. Other distributions are supported, and you can check their list of supported distributions if you wish to use something else. But Tuxedo OS is very well integrated and feels like a professional implementation. I'm not going to go into too much detail about Tuxedo OS this time around, because it's the same version of the OS as in other Tuxedo reviews that I've done. We'll probably get a newer and updated version of Tuxedo OS next year, so there's really not a whole lot I could say about it right now that I haven't said before. But I think it's worth mentioning how well everything is integrated. When I first powered on the notebooks, I was given the opportunity to set up some initial configuration and add a user account for myself. After I logged in, I was notified that there were updates available, so I went ahead and got those installed and then restarted the computers. The entire experience was pretty well designed, and they even include a flash drive in the box as well that you can use to restore the OS if you ever need to do so. Overall, Tuxedo OS is a distribution that keeps things simple and doesn't call too much attention to itself, which I like. So if you're a fan of the keep it simple mentality, then you'll probably like it quite a bit. Since the new Polaris features an NVIDIA GPU, we definitely need to take a look at the gaming experience. I had a chance to try several games on these notebooks, and they kept up with them very well. For example, I decided to run Doom on these notebooks, which is one of my go-to games for testing out the performance of Linux gaming notebooks, and it performs very well. As you can see from the footage right here, the games were responsive and fast, and I have no complaints about the gaming experience at all. I think it's really good. Now, the experience might be even better if I wasn't recording the screen, because technically, whenever I record the screen, it's the same thing as having two displays that are mirrored, so the video card is doing a little bit more work than it would in real life, but it still performs very well. The Polaris Notebooks had no problems keeping up with Doom or any other game that I threw at them, so therefore I have no hesitation at all when it comes to recommending this notebook for those of you that play games. It definitely has powerful enough hardware. Tuxedo advertises that these new Polaris models can support up to 7 hours of battery life. However, for whatever reason, I haven't been able to get the batteries on these units to last quite that long. After I adjust the power profiles a bit, I am able to get the batteries to last up to 4 hours, but I haven't been able to quite reach 7 hours. If battery life is your primary consideration, then a gaming notebook is probably not the best way to go. Generally speaking, gaming notebooks are fairly power hungry. But I definitely wanted to let you guys know that I haven't been able to hit the advertised 7 hours. Hopefully that's something that Tuxedo can fix. But on my end, I would say the average is probably around 3 hours before you start turning things down. Overall, I really like the new Polaris notebooks. They're well designed, the operating system is very well integrated, and we have some powerful hardware in here. So if you like to play games, then these notebooks are especially up your alley. Other than the battery life, I have no hesitation recommending the new Polaris models to you guys if you're looking for a Linux-powered gaming notebook. But if battery life is important to you, then unfortunately I wasn't really impressed by the batteries on these models. If it's an issue in software, maybe they'll fix the battery life in an update or something like that. But if you take that out of the equation, the new Polaris models are awesome. Now, if you were to order one for yourself, you'll definitely want to make sure that you pay special attention to the configuration page because Tuxedo Computers has various keyboard styles available. You'll definitely want to make sure that you choose the right keyboard for you. And also, you'll want to make sure that you choose the right CPU for you, especially if you plan on using Thunderbolt devices, because you can only do that on the Intel model. But other than that, it's just down to your preference. So definitely let me know what you guys thought of this review or Tuxedo Computers in general in the comments down below. And I have some really awesome content coming very soon, so make sure you subscribe so that way you won't miss out. Thanks for watching everyone, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again very soon.